Today we are making hash browns. And we kind of are trying a different setup here in the kitchen that we'll be tweaking as I go through the videos. So hopefully every video will be a little bit better than the one before. Um, we're trying to kind of improve on lighting and different sorts of things like that. So any comments that you have, if you have trouble hearing um, the videos, please leave little comments for me so, uh, so we know what we can improve on. So today is hash browns, and I got this request from one of the gals in a group that I belong to for people who have had gastric sleeve surgery. So just a little background. I had gastric sleeve surgery about a year ago, 13 months, and I lost, I did pretty well. I lost about 40-ish, 45 pounds, and then my weight loss just, that was kind of it. It just really slowed down. So what I decided to do was go on a low carbohydrate diet and that picked it back up a little bit and then I got to six months and completely stalled and stopped losing weight altogether and stalled from months six to ten really and I decided to go ketogenic and that has gotten my weight loss started back up. So I'm down a total of 85 pounds. I've got about 25 left to go and I just started trying to modify different things that I missed eating. So today is hash browns, and I'm going to tell you a few cute, or a few little details here. So the butternut squash noodles, I got these at Walmart in the produce section, like where the packaged chopped broccoli and cauliflower are, and I just want you to see how long these things are. I mean, that's, that's kind of a short one. There's some in here that are just insane, you know, probably four foot long. Uh, but anyway, butternut squash uh, noodles, that's what you're going to need, and that's going to give us that kind of uh, our substitute for our potato. Then the other thing you're going to need, and they sell this in Walmart also, um, is chopped cauliflower. And you don't have to get chopped cauliflower if you've got a food processor and you want to chop it in your food processor, that's fine. You can also buy the riced cauliflower from the freezer section, Green Giant makes it, and, and that'll work just fine too, and that way you've kind of always got it on hand because this stuff goes bad pretty quick. So what I did was, this is the cauliflower, I did a cup of cauliflower for two minutes in the microwave, and then you take a paper towel or you can take cheesecloth, and if you take cheesecloth, put, cloth, put the cauliflower in it and hold it over the sink and just squeeze all that fluid out of it. I just put it in a bowl and used paper towel and pushed it down with the paper towel and got it all the fluid out of it because you don't want soupy hash browns. The squash, I got water in a pan boiling, probably about maybe two and a half cups of water. Put about a quarter teaspoon of salt in it, get it to a good, put a lid on it, get it to a good rolling boil, and then add your spaghetti or your butternut squash for probably about 25 seconds. You're gonna to wanna to be religious and watch that thing because if you go any longer, it's gonna get um, like mushy and it's still gotta cook in the pans so you don't wanna overcook it. That's just kinda of to get it started. And you do the same thing. You see I'm taking my paper towel and pushing down on that to get the fluid out of it. Potatoes are a pretty dry vegetable um, compared to squash, so in order for this not to be soupy, I want to take out as much of the liquid as I can. And there's a lot. I'm, I'm surprised. It's, it's actually probably just about as wet. Oh, get my trash can there. It's just as wet as the cauliflower, really. And like I said, you can do this with cheesecloth. I just don't ever have cheesecloth. It's one of those things you got to buy at the grocery store. Or I guess that's... I bought it before. I think I bought it in the grocery store. Um, and I just don't keep it on hand. This is just as easy and ready. So I do like that. I posted my first video last night on my new YouTube channel called Keto Poppy. Um, and that was cornbread. So if you haven't tried the cornbread recipe or seen the video, make sure that you go and have a look at that. And when you get to my YouTube page, subscribe and like, because that really... Um, it really seriously helps. That's the one thing that I really need you all to do to help contribute to making the channel a success so I can continue doing the videos. 
So, and for any other videos you watch, make sure that you go and like and subscribe those because it really helps the person who makes the videos. And the other thing is all of the ingredients and the instructions will be in the description portion of the video. Just underneath there's a little down arrow that you can click. That's good. And you'll get the description of everything that I used, brands, um, the measurements, and here we go. So here's our butternut squash. We might need a spoon to make that happen. Oh, and I should put some, I've got some bacon grease that I reserved. You don't have to use bacon grease, you could use uh, cooking spray, but where I'm on a ketogenic diet, I use the bacon grease because it gives me that extra fat that I need. So I'm going to use, what's that, about a tablespoon? Maybe? Uh oh, hear that? That's the sizzle, guys. That's what you want. You want your pan to sound like that before you put your hash browns down. Okay, I'll let that. I'll lose my spoon, I think. Uh, okay. So while that's doing its thing, let's add in our cauliflower. There we go. And I'm not a fan of cauliflower, so I'm really always amazed at how well it works in a recipe and doesn't taste like cauliflower. I just, that's a miracle to me. I use it for my pizza dough, um, and who, I would not have thought cauliflower would be good to, with pizza dough. There's a really good pizza dough res, recipe. It's Uncle Buck, or no, Chef Buck, and he does a great job. That's my favorite ketogenic pizza dough. So what we have here is half a cup of Parmesan cheese. And I use the one that doesn't have cellulose in it. They use cellulose as an agent to keep it from caking, but I know a lot of folks that are doing keto don't want that cellulose powder. It doesn't, I don't think it adds any extra carbs, but some folks say they're sensitive to it. I use Parmesan both ways. I just picked this one for this recipe. This is, I wanna say a third cup, it'll be down in the recipe of pork rinds, and I used max pork rinds, just the plain ones, and what you want to do is put them in your food processor, or you can just put them in a large gallon bag and use a mallet or a rolling pin and just smash them down. So I think I've got a third cup here of pork rinds, and that's what gives you your crunch. This is just salt and pepper to taste, so you know, whatever you would put in your hash browns. And then I've got an egg beaten. I'm not going to put that whole egg in here because what I find happens is it comes out like an egg with hash browns cooked in it, which is gross, and that's not what we're going for. Let me mix this up a little bit and we'll add that egg. Starting to get fall outside, guys. I didn't think it was ever going to happen. It was 95 degrees just a week ago here. I mean, we were out on the boat and burning up. So I'm Don's, Don really likes... I think he'd be happy if we could have five months of summer. And I really like fall. I like summer too, but I really like fall. Okay, so you can kind of see the texture of that. And you want to add this sparingly. So I'm going to start with a tablespoon and see what that looks like. I think it's going to need two. Okay, so let's do two tablespoons and the egg's already beaten. and we'll stir that up. And that just kind of helps hold it together. These aren't going to be like hash brown cakes like you would see at um, McDonald's hash browns. You know, these are more Waffle House scattered kind of hash browns, but the egg really does help kind of uh, help the, the cheese and the pork rinds to get incorporated. So there's that, that's good. All right, that looks good. You see the texture there, just a little wet. Put that in there, and then let's, I'm gonna drop these by quarter measuring cup, just so they're the same size and they, uh, they cook at the same rate. And I've got my electric skillet on. Normally I would cook these on the stove in a cast iron skillet, but for the purposes of video, it's super helpful to have this. So I've got that set at 350. So we'll drop that in there. And I hate that you guys can't see in the pan. Eventually we'll have to get a second camera going so we can do a shot from above and you can see what's in the pan. You might be able to see it if I get on this side. All right, we'll drop that in. 
and those, I'm going to smash them down, those will take about three minutes per side. So I'm getting ready to trigger all of your devices. Alexa, three minute timer. All right. So we'll let those cook. I'm going to flip them and then I'll cook them for three more minutes and they'll be ready to go. So in the meantime, I just wanted to thank everybody who subscribed to the channel. That's just so helpful to, to give me an outlet for this creative energy. I would have never thought I would be somebody who was making cooking videos, but in doing the ketogenic diet, I just found I was missing some things. I was missing cornbread and cookies and hash browns and, and I didn't want to have to give those up for the rest of my life. And for those of us that have had bariatric surgery, we can only stomach so much. Our stomachs are about, can hold between a half and a, probably three fourths of a cup of food at a time. And so in my opinion, the food needs to be really good. And I was just sitting here thinking I've forgotten my spatula. So hold on one second, I'm gonna grab my spatula and we'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with my spatula. Anyway, so I just started adapting recipes that I found online. I did find some recipes for keto hash browns and I made them and they had the Parmesan and they had the egg. And when you cook them up, they were either too eggy or the other problem that I found was that there was no crunch to them. And hash browns should be crisp, they should have a crunch, which made me think pork rinds. And I added the pork rinds. I made this recipe last night for Don. And we had, um, we had corn muffins, chicken, and hash browns. And it was just, it was so good. It was so nice to eat comfort food with this cold weather coming in. And I just was super happy about that. So there's, there's all of that. I know everybody's getting ready for apple cider and pumpkin patches and we'll start doing some recipes that are aimed at Thanksgiving so you guys can start practicing those before Thanksgiving rolls around. Since we've got our cornbread, we can now do a cornbread dressing video, which is going to be great. And I'd like, I'm going to do a pumpkin pie and I'm working on that crust right now. So once I, once I get the pumpkin pie recipe up, and then I didn't know if you guys would like some other pies. I could do an apple pie and you would have that for Thanksgiving, but I'm thinking cornbread dressing, macaroni and cheese, pumpkin pie. And if you all can think of anything else, we can do a green bean casserole. That one's gonna be super easy. So Alexa, stop. That one will be super easy. So we'll definitely do that one. Let me flip these over and they held together nice. And there is a good crunchy. I'll show you these when they come off. Alexa, three minute timer. Again, sorry for triggering all your devices. But anyway, that's kind of how I got into cooking. Um, Don makes some appearances in the videos and he's very entertaining. So you all will like that. And he helped me with our whole lighting setup and our backdrop today so that we'd have good light for the video. So I'm going to let these cook for three minutes and then we'll be back and we'll give them a try. Okay, so we're back with the hash browns. I actually ended up turning the griddle up to 400 to really get that side um, browned. So on the second side, I did 400 for uh, four minutes. So you can see they come out, and that if that doesn't look like hash browns, I don't know what it what does. And we're gonna let Don try them. Don, say hi. Hi guys. This is my sweet husband. Um, can you, can you hear that? I don't know if I need to get a lapel mic so you guys can hear that. So they're crunchy. So we're going to let Don try a bite, um, and I'll try a bite, and then we'll add some ketchup because we're ketchup on our hash browns. Okay, you ready? Let's see. Okay. It's crunch. yummy. It's crunchy. Good texture. Yeah. Would you think cauliflower and squash? No. No, not at all. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now catch up. Because they're just not the same, this cat. Sorry about the cat, guys. Um, they're not the same without ketchup to me. Okay, look at a crunchy bite. Those are really good. I would definitely mm -hmm. make these again. Thank you. You're welcome. That's 
good stuff. That is good stuff. The ketchup makes it. Mm. That's yummy. Okay. That's really good. So honestly, for real honestly, not the coaching I gave you earlier. <laughs> um, those, as a comparison to hash browns, would you say we're pretty close? Pretty close. I mean, you're not, guys, you're never going to get something that's not something else to taste like that something. So what you're trying to do is get it as close or make it good enough in its own right that you would consider replacing. You know, realistically, if this is what you ate and you didn't eat regular hash browns, mm -hmm. within, you know, a couple times of eating this, you're like, yeah, who needs hash browns? There you go. Who needs hash browns? And this is from my guy who does not do keto and, uh, and is used to eating regular carbs. So, so now for me, I've not had anything like that in a really long time. So for me, it's just incredible. I'm not giving you any more. Oh, um, but he's off to work. All right, guys. Thanks for coming by, Bye. babe. We appreciate the guest You're appearance. You're welcome, babe. And that's it. That's Keto Hash Browns. I'll put the all the information in the description area where um, I'll tell you what products I used and I'll put the, you know, all the ingredients, the measurements, how you make them, and then the macros in the bottom, so your fat, carbs. Now, always remember when you're getting macros from a website or from a YouTube video, go ahead and put those in your tracking app yourself because if you use a different brand of almond flour or a different brand of ketchup, it's, it's going to be different for you. And also, I find people's math can be really suspect, so make sure you check it yourself because I would hate for you to be way off on your carb count because you went by something that I did and maybe your products had a different, the whatever you used for the recipe had a different carb count than what I used. But that is uh, Keto Hash Browns with Keto Poppy and I definitely make these twice or five times. You guys have a great day. See you soon.